In this chapter, what we're going to be doing is going over chapter eight, uh, home and auto automobile insurance. What we'll be doing is looking at overall insurance at first, then homeowners, and a little bit on that, and then getting into uh, car insurance and some of the things to think about. Insurance is primarily giving somebody else the opportunity to protect you from any kind of financial loss. All right. You have your insurance company uh, that is that you're buying a policy from. You're paying for somebody else to take on the risk that goes along with that. What you're doing is you're getting a policy. You're purchasing a policy. And what they do is they'll charge you a premium for that, uh, for uh, being able to protect you and some of the things that go along with that. Uh, some of the terminology to think about, you have risk. All right. The risk, in other words, there's a chance of loss. Peril is something that could cause the loss. And a hazard, that's something that increases the likelihood of a loss. You have personal, property, and liability risks. Okay, Personal risk is something that's uh, a, a risk to you yourself or to others. Property is you know, a risk to, of a loss to your house or to your car. Uh, then liability is if you are responsible for somebody else's damage, that's liability, and primarily around the idea of uh, negligence. Now, pure risk is insurable. Speculative risk is not. So in other words, if you go to the bo boats or something like that, you can't insure anything like that. Pure risk would be things like personal, okay, loss of income or life, all right, or a loss to your property or something that you caused by not taking ordinary care to prevent the accident. So for example, if you did not shovel the driveway in front of your house after a snowstorm, somebody slips, gets hurt, you could be found negligible, negligible in that and have to pay for their uh, hospitalization. Some of the things that you do to manage risks, okay, things like avoidance. In other words, for your computer, you get virus protection. All right. Here we are. We're talking about viruses with coronavirus going on. So you will get virus protection for your computer to keep from getting that. That's risk avoidance. Risk of reduction is actions to take to reduce the risk. So, for example, where I live, um, let's say that I go to Walmart and do some grocery shopping and I want to go south on 7 Highway. Well, this is a very busy road. There's two lanes going each way, plus a middle turn lane that goes along with that. If I tried to come out this way to go left during uh, rush hour traffic, it would be very, very dangerous. So what I typically do is I go out this way over to Duncan up to the light to turn left. What that's doing is that is risk avoidance. I am avoiding the risk of running into something. Uh, I'm actually reducing the risk of having an accident by doing that. Risk assumption is where the insurance company is actually taking on that risk. So that's where you buy that policy and they're going to assume the risk, any kind of loss that you may have. Now, there are different risk management strategies that you could take on. So in other words, you have your disability. So what you do is you get disability insurance. You have illness, so you get health insurance, uh, life insurance to as far as taking on the risk for death. Uh, property loss, you get automobile insurance and things like that. And liability, you have your automobile and your homeowner's insurance that help you with that. So one of the first things you want to do is when you start thinking about insurance is put together your goals as far as what are the things that you really want to protect. You want to protect yourself. You want to protect your stuff. You want to protect your family and any kind of uh, income and savings that you may have. You put together your plan to reach those goals. In other words, what is it that you need and how much? So what, should, what, what kind of insurance should you buy? And then you go ahead and put your plan into action. There's all kinds of reasons to protect your stuff. Okay, so your property insurance and your, as far as your house and your car and things like that, there have been all kinds of natural disasters that caused huge losses as far as property is concerned. Liability is the legal responsibility for taking on another person's losses. So in other words, when you are driving, you are responsible for driving safely. And so you have to carry liability insurance 
to protect others from some of your negligence and or some of the things that you might do. There's also the idea of vicarious liability. In other words, being held responsible for others' actions. Now, homeowner's insurance is where you are protecting your house and your stuff from any kind of financial risks. There are different forms, okay? You have your broad, your comprehensive form. Um, whichever one you buy, you have to make sure that it's the one that's right for you. Now, renter's insurance, we've talked about this before. Renter's insurance is really an excellent thing to make sure that you're taking into account and purchasing. If you're renting an apartment, you want to protect your stuff. Now, the building itself will be protected by the uh, owners of the apartment building. You want to protect your stuff. And renter's insurance is really pretty cheap to purchase. Now, homeowners will protect the building and any kind of other structures and things, and it will provide other expenses in case something happens to your place of residence. So for example, in our neighborhood, uh, two years ago, there was a house that had a fire and the people who were, uh, who owned that house were out of that house for something like four months while the house was being fixed. Well, their insurance covered the additional living expenses that went with uh, that, that loss. Your homeowner's insurance is going to cover um, the dwelling itself and then also personal property so for example uh stuff on inside all of your furniture and your clothing and things like that there are limits as far as how much that they will actually cover as far as uh, that insurance is concerned it also includes personal liability so for example if somebody slips and falls on your driveway um, it will cover up to a certain amount as far as any kind of expenses for that. And then you can get specialized coverage. So for example, if you live in a flood area, one of the things you can do is you can purchase flood insurance. You can also get other endorsements or what's also called riders. Let's say that you have um, some real expensive jewelry that you inherited or something like that. You can have a rider put on your insurance to, to cover some of that. Now you have your basic forms as far as your insurance policies are concerned, all right? This is an example of my insurance policy right here. You can see that State Farm is looking at the dwelling and it's saying, okay, so the limit that they'll pay as far as the replacement value on that house, on my house is 273,000. Other structures, we have an attached garage and so that is considered the other structures. It'll cover up to $200,000 in personal property. So in other words, all the furniture and my computers and things like that. Um, there's also other things that are included in this insurance. So for example, arson reward of $1,000. If somebody sets fire to my house, arson, then if I can identify who that is, I will get a reward of a thousand bucks. Any kind of uh, credit card forgery or something like that, thousand dollars. Debris removal, in other words, tornado comes through and uh, downs a bunch of, uh, of trees and things like that, it will pay, um, pay an additional 5% of the total value of the dwelling up to $1,000 for trees, okay? Fire department, in other words, there's a fire and the fire department sends us a bill. There's gonna be 500 bucks there. Um, locks, uh, trees and shrubbery up to $750 per item, things like that. Now there's also personal liability uh, up to, I carry a uh, half a million dollars in personal liability because of my business, because of the uh, things that I was doing, going on to other, uh, uh, other locations and dealing with their people and their systems and things like this, damage to others, medical payments to others, things like that. So I do have a deductible and the deductible is a half a percent and that's uh, 1300 bucks. So if I do have some sort of a, some sort of a loss, I will have to pay this deductible first before they'll start to cover any of the losses. If I have a loss of just, you know, say $800, it doesn't make sense to pay, uh, make a claim on my insurance policy. I'll just go ahead and pay the 800 bucks because I have a deductible of 1300. Uh, I have replacement cost as far as, uh, my my insurance is concerned rather than just kind of the uh, a certain amount i have what is it what will it cost me to actually replace the things that were lost 
Now, things are going to, there are different things that are going to impact what it costs you as far as your insurance is concerned. What kind of replacement value do you have? And with my policy, it tends to go up every year. The policy will automatically increase based on uh, the value of the surrounding homes and things like that. Um, what's the value of what you have on the inside? Uh, do you have any specific things that you would like to cover? And things you want to think about is cash value versus replacement value. Cash value is the replacement of the item less the depreciation. We've talked a little bit about that. So, for example, if you buy something for $1,000 and after several years it's worth only $500, cash value will pay you only the $500. Replacement value will pay you what will it cost to replace that item that you lost, that you lost. And so I carry replacement value on my homeowner's insurance. Other factors that in fact uh, your um, insurance costs, where is the home located? In other words, is it in a good part of town or bad part of town? Do you have a fire hydrant nearby? We have a fire hydrant that's right outside uh, our house. What kind of structure do you have? Is it made of brick? Is it made of wood? Uh, what kind of discounts do you have? So for example, do you have alarms? And we have to have smoke detectors and things. Do you insure your car with the same company? And we do. So what we do is we get a discount because we're also, we also have our car insurance with them. And one of the things I always tell folks, shop around. What you want to do is you want to shop around and find the insurance policy and company that you're comfortable with. Talk to folks. Who is it that's had good luck with uh, different insurance companies? What are they costing? Things like this. Now, when it comes to car insurance, uh, you are responsible for uh, the financial aspect and your responsibility. Driving a car is a privilege. It's not a right. And so with those privileges comes the responsibility to to protect others and yourself as far as insurance is concerned. Now, one of the things that you'll see with car insurance is three numbers. So the you have you might see with your car insurance something like this 100 350 or it might be 50 150 or something along those lines what that's doing is that's talking about the maximum that they will pay for various things the first number there is talking about the maximum that they'll pay for injuries to any one person so for example if you are in a car and two people get hurt and each of them have $50,000 in hospital bills, it will pay for any one person $50,000 and the other person $50,000. The second number is saying here's the maximum amount we'll pay for any kind of, of hospitalization. So if you have two people who are hurt and $50,000 and $50,000, that's covered under this. If you hit a car that has a family of five in there and each of them have uh, $100,000 in medical bills, that's $500,000. It'll only pay $300,000. The third number is the maximum amount that's going to be paid for property damage to somebody else. So, for example, you're in a car accident, you hit somebody with uh, who's driving a... Um, uh, uh, one of these exotic sports cars that's worth $200,000, a Lamborghini or something like that, and total it out, $200,000, we're only going to pay $50,000 for that. The medical payments covers the cost of medical uh, bills for people who are hurt in your automobile, in your car, and it covers you and your family members, all right? This is talking about the bodily injury coverages and other coverages, in other words, bodily injury payments and then uninsured motorist, motorist protection. One of the things you want to do is make sure you do have that because there are a lot of people who are riding around out there who do not have insurance. And so you want to make sure that your insurance is covering you for any kind of uninsured motorist vehicle. Um, property damage. OK, so in other words, there's the liability aspect. Then you have collision and comprehensive. These things here have a tendency to be elective. You don't have to buy these things. The main thing that you need to have is any kind of liability that goes along with that. That's the minimum. Having collision and comprehensive physical damage protecting you and your car. All right. So we talked about the three numbers and where they're coming from. 
Uninsured motorist is making sure that it's protecting you when somebody else does not have the insurance or doesn't have enough to pay, enough insurance to pay. So for example, on my auto policy, I have both uninsured and I have underinsured motorist coverage. Property damage liability is when you hurt somebody else's, you run into someone or you uh, hit somebody's fence or something along those lines. Collision pays for the damage to your vehicle, regardless of who's at fault. See, that's why those who are in, um, who are uninsurable and they go into the, the states, um, states programs, they're not going to have collision. You're going to have just liability on there. You have to make sure that you have at a minimum liability. When you add collision to it, that really does increase the cost of your uh, insurance policy. Comprehensive is basically anything that might happen to your car that's not an accident. In other words, you're not bumping into somebody. Uh, maybe a tree falls on it or something like that, or somebody uh, breaks into your car and steals your stuff. No fault is where, um, is where the insurance covers you and you, no matter who's at fault, you collect from your insurance company. Kansas is a no fault state. So if you're in an accident, you bump into something or somebody bumps into you and uh, the, the insurance is covering that, your insurance company is going to cover any of the, your losses. Their insurance company is going to cover theirs. Now, the insurance companies could go back to try to collect the money from the other ones who are at fault. But the main thing is you don't have to worry about getting coverage from the other folks. Your company, your insurance will cover you. You could also get some other stuff that goes along with your car insurance. Uh, wage loss, in other words, you get hurt in an accident. Uh, there may be a wage loss in there. Uh, towing, emergency road service. We have that in our, in our insurance coverage. Reimbursement uh, for rental cars may be covered in that also. One of the things to think about is making sure you have enough insurance in case you're sued. What's going to impact your insurance premium are things like what kind of car do you have? Do you have a POS or do you have something that's really worth a lot of money? You also have to think about which ones are stolen the most and that's going to increase your, uh, your car insurance. You have to think about where you live. In other words, are there a lot of vandalism rates or are you in an area that has a lot of accidents? Are you in an area that has a lot of uninsured motorists? Um, that will impact uh, your, your insurance cost. Also, your classification as far as you as a driver. I could not wait until I hit 25. At 25, your insurance rates go down quite a bit. Um, between 18 and 24, what's happening is you are a huge risk. I mean, there are more accidents by young drivers uh, than there are by some of the older ones. So your dry, your age is going to impact your, uh, your insurance. Sex also. Men have more, especially young men, have more accidents than women do. That's all there is to it. If you cannot get auto insurance, in other words, State Farm or not, some of the others are not going to give you insurance, you can get insurance through the assigned risk pool through the state. Now, the thing is, that's going to be very expensive, but you can get insurance. You must have insurance. That's a state law. You must have insurance in order to drive the car. And one of the things I always tell folks is shop around, compare the companies, think about the rates and services, things like that. Think about what kind of premium discounts you have. Uh, so in other words, putting in car alarms, uh, if you have more than one car, you'll get a discount for that. Uh, take on a larger deductible. The more, uh, the larger deductible that you take on, the less your monthly rate will be. Of course, you do have to cover um, the, the deductible. We carry a $500 deductible. And what that will, that is cheaper than carrying a hundred dollar deductible. And it's, 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 it's more expensive than carrying a thousand dollar deductible. So it just depends on what it is that you have there. It also depends on what kind of car you have and making sure that you have a good credit history. So these are some of the key points from the chapter. Give me a shout if you have some questions.